As time progresses further, the electric fields that were already generated during the first quarter of a wavelength, or first quarter of a period, will continue to propagate away from the antenna at the speed of light, and so forth. So closer to the dipole, since the accumulated electrons on the bottom half of the dipole reached a maximum at uh, T, capital T over 4, then from T over 4 to T over 2, the current starts to decrease. So here's the current. Here's T over 4. That's where we plotted it before. And now we're going down to here. This is T over 2. So the current but in this section of the wave, the current is going to decrease, meaning the electrons are starting to flow and accelerate in the opposite direction. So this means an electric field disturbance is going to be generated in the opposite direction in this time period, capital T over 4 to capital T over 2. So the electric field disturbance, so the electrons here, if they're moving upward, they're accelerating upward, then we're going to start to get electrons are going to start migrating up this direction, and we'll start setting up an electric field in the reverse direction. And these electric fields are also going to propagate away from the dipole at the speed of light. Now, right at capital T over 2, enough electrons have migrated back along the dipole so that the total charge on the antenna is back to zero. So, no net charge. This is at time t capital T over 2. So this means that there are no electric fields now extending between the upper and the lower half of the dipole anymore. Also, at time t, capital T over 2 seconds, the current is zero, so there are no accelerating electrons. There are just lots of free electrons here evenly distributed. So no electric field disturbances are being produced anymore either. So what's going to happen is that now that there are no electric field disturbances being produced and also no separation of charge on the antenna, the electric field lines are going to separate from the dipole and connect with each other. You can see that happening here. Here are the electric fields going in opposite directions. And so they're going to connect together to form closed loops. And these loops of time-changing electric fields and then also which will generate time-changing magnetic field loops. And these then will then propagate out into space, and they're going to propagate as an electromagnetic wave according to Maxwell's equations. Here is an animation of the electric fields that are generated by a dipole, and also the propagation away from the antenna over time. Let's get back to our design challenge. Say this red region here is the tumor in the colon that we want to destroy. Considering what we just covered, we might imagine that one option is to cut a hole through the person's skin and tissue to the tumor, maybe right through here. And if we want the approach to be minimally invasive, we would want the hole to be as small as possible. Then perhaps we could extend a thin transmission line, maybe a coaxial cable, through the hole towards the tumor and finally, we would want to include an antenna. In this case, so far we've come up with a small dipole antenna at the end of the coaxial cable. This dipole antenna would create electromagnetic waves that would heat the tumor and destroy the cancer cells. Now, to create a dipole antenna at the end of the transmission line, in our diagram earlier, we showed the ends of the two conductors bending to opposite sides here, like this. Remember that the diagram, that this diagram, like the one shown here, is a generic diagram representing any transmission line geometry. So in the case of a coaxial cable, bending the two conductors away from each other means extending the inner conductor to one side, that's the black one here, and the outer conductor to another side, the green one. Maybe we could accomplish this by attaching two short segments of wire at the end of the transmission line. We just want to make sure that we do not create a short between the two sections. 
Take out your in-class project notebooks and describe how we might use a coaxial cable and a dipole antenna attached to the end of it to create an electromagnetic wave that would be used to heat a tumor and destroy the cancer cells locally. In the next couple of lectures, we'll see if we can improve on this initial design.